In my day job, I'm a kind of high-tech babysitter. I take care of the smallest air-breathing humans, and those are premature babies. We have to use all kinds of technology to take care of these babies, otherwise they, they would not survive. So these babies are our charges. We are their trustees. Thanks for joining Esteem Television. My name is Augustine Nambe. Uh, I have a show today which is a show that I've been uh, planning on for a very long time and, uh, and I'm very glad that I'm able to bring the show to you. Um, you know, it is always said that in, 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 in liberation movements, you need three things. You need a charismatic leader, you need an ideology, and you need finance. Uh, finance. And I think that all these are really connected. Because if you do not have a good leader, then they are, obviously the ideology will not be pushed forward and, and you won't be getting to people's hearts and therefore they won't give you money. And um, we are in December, which is very close to, to the date that uh, Seseko Ayok Tabe was, was picked up by the La Republic of Cameroon. I think they picked him up because he was being effective and they knew these three things that if you cut one off then you throw the whole uh, struggle of Ambazonians to liberate themselves from colonization in, in a tailspin and I think uh, there's some tailspin going on right now. Now I do have Dr. Emil Mondua with me on the phone and the reason why I'm bringing Dr. Emil Mondua was because um, in the 90s the SCNC was what kept the struggle going. I'm going to explain to you a little bit about what I'm going to do. I'm going to play a song and I'm going to sing a song. And the song that I'm playing means a lot to me. It's entitled, I Believe I Can Fly. both in North America and on Ground Zero or in Southern Cameroons was what kept um, the struggle going. And it kept it going until, and let me say this, it bridged the original hard colonization with, with, with the revolution right now and it needed that bridge. And when I say 
SCNC in North America and also down in the territory. It was really North America that was that was powering SCNC down in the territory because one of the things La Republic does and loves to do is is make sure they destroy our economy, impoverish us as possible, so we don't find a way to fight back. And SCNC North America was the was the was the engine for a very very long time, for decades, that powered the struggle on the ground, and that was under the leadership of Dr. Emil Mondua. And I'm very happy to bring him here today to have a conversation with us, share some of the magic he had to keep a struggle going on at a time when uh, people were not really engaged. And before I bring him on, I also want to make another statement that a lot of liberation or a lot of people in the world have liberated themselves from help from its uh, diaspora. And the most important diaspora for any liberation movement in the world is North America. So I'll be happy to bring Dr. Mondua on to help us share his experiences and maybe advise us on what we need to be doing in North America to be as relevant today in the struggle like uh, SCNC North America was um, in, in the 90s and the decades that followed and probably even earlier. So let me welcome Dr. Thank you, Dr. Mondua. Thank you for joining us on this show. Thank you, Augustine. Uh, once again, thank you. Yes. So like you, like you heard me uh, introduce, uh, just, just, just tell us how long you were, the, uh, the, uh, you were in leadership in North America. And before that, I know, <laughs> Obviously, before you even got to leadership, you must have been a member and, and kept going. Share, share your, just tell us your North American um, uh, activism, activism history. Well, I became chair of North America quite almost by default. Uh, you know, I used to be interested in the struggle. Uh, I wouldn't say peripherally, but mostly with my I had a lot of ideas on how to improve the lot of what we used to call anglophones, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, so I would attend meetings and uh, and and give the and and give ideas. Uh, there were various. There was the SCNC. There was even the SDF at one time, uh, which for a while we thought would champion um, our cause. Okay, having grown as a kid in West Cameroon and seen that we were, we had our own agency. You know, it's as if uh, 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 somebody knows how to take care of themselves and suddenly you take away, uh, imagine an adult having to ask permission to go to the bathroom or to take a bath or to turn the lights on. Now, imagine you are autonomous in that way and then somebody comes into your house and says okay before you do any of those things you have to seek permission I saw that transition okay so I was interested in the cause from that perspective okay uh, I wasn't interested in what went on in La Republic to Cameroon but I actually was involved in the formative years of the of the SDF, although I didn't join because I thought they were not taking care of our interests. But then I began to pay attention to the Cameroon Anglophone Movement, the SCNC and so on, which were championing our cause. Okay, So quite by, I would say by happenstance, somebody nominated me for chair of the SCNC and I became chair of the SCNC. It was not, I went to that meeting without any, um, any uh, ideas of running for anything. Okay, I generally don't run for anything. I'm a, and it took my, it engaged my life for the next uh, 10 to 12 years okay, before my time was up and I had to make way. I think it's surprising that that you said you came into leadership by by default, really. And I'm saying this because I was one of those people that you that you called, and I remember we had hours on the phone, 
and I, I don't know where you, you got my number from or how you became aware of me, but you invited me to, to be part of the whole thing, and you and I had a whole, whole long conversation about that. So when you, even though you came in by default, you did the, the footwork, you recruited uh, members, you did the things. Tell me how you grew the, the, the organization, because obviously you, you were growing it nationally by, by inviting people from, from out of state to, to become members. We did a lot of um, legwork, so we identified places where there were concentrations of Southern Cameroonians, and we went there. So you had Washington DC, Boston, uh, parts of New Jersey, Minnesota, and so on. Uh, I couldn't quite make it to Los Angeles, but we, that's what we did a lot of legwork. You know, we, 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 we crafted uh, a vision. Okay, we, we crafted a picture. Okay, for the, for the people. Uh, uh, what was the word you used? You said you crafted what? A vision. A vision. Okay. Yes. So we we, we, we told our story, and we said this is where we are going to, with, uh, with with uh, um, uh, with this. So. Uh, but I'll tell you that the majority of people, our people, thought it was a pipe dream. Okay? The majority of our people thought it was a pipe dream. But I think they did not understand the power of ideas. Mm -hmm. They did not understand that what people think takes them where they want to go, okay? And uh, uh, um, there was no other vision in town. Everything else had to do with compromise, with living according to somebody else's plan for you, okay? And all the things that we did, all the things that we wrote, all the actions that we put on paper, that we put on video, you put on video, that is what has propelled this thing till today. Okay? We had, uh, today, you have people who are pursuing the, uh, the, 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 the mission and in other ways. We were the people who said the force of argument and not the argument of force. You, might, you remember that? Yes. Okay, and uh, so when you that is your tool, that is your ideology. Okay, and what you do is that, and you are limited, you have limited finance, right? Your people are not contributing as much as they could. Okay, nobody supports you in the international community. So, what do you do? You think, okay, when you have limit. When you have limited means, you think. You do not tackle the enemy where the enemy is strong. You figure out the enemy's pressure points and you concentrate your force on that. Okay, And it's not force. It might be something that you write. It might be something that you say. It might be somebody, something that you, you talk to people about. Okay, But you do not confront them where they are strong. You look for where, and then you think outside the box. You think outside the box. Okay, you do not. Uh, you see, the the, the 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 world is. We think there is something called reality. Okay, we think there is something called reality. Mm -hmm. Well, this is a shirt or a jacket, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, but. If you think about outside the box, it is also a rope that you can use to climb outside this window. Right? Yes. Okay. It is also a blanket. It is it's many things. It's a screen. It's it can be so many other things. So you have to when you whenever you look about look at something, you think all around it. And it's not just a thing like this, it could be our situation, 
it could be a problem that we face. Okay, so uh, uh, for example, people think that um, the United Nations gives independence. Looks that way. They like, but at, at the end of the day, they are the people who just take the glory <laughs> of granting somebody independence. The real work happens somewhere else. Yes. Okay, so you, we've got to think outside the box. Um, uh, you, you, people think that if, if you go to diplomats, they can do this or that for you. They don't. Okay, diplomats' work is to go out there and get gravy for their countries. Okay, they don't take risks, they're civil servants. So those, those are not the people. So if you're in America or you're in Britain or France or wherever, don't worry too much about those people. There are other ways to go about things. And you've got to open your mind to that. So that is what that is what we did. Okay? We went to places that you cannot think about. Okay? And then you can apply pressure. And they don't know where the pressure is coming from. Yes. You know, I wanna I wanna say that when you talk about thinking, and I know you you did a lot of retreats i remember there's a retreat we had in adamstown it lasted the whole weekend and that retreat just explain the whole idea of that retreat please let let um uh, help us so we understand what retreats are for and i think that is and i'm saying this because when you started talking about thinking out of the box and and thinking and vision and it comes from so 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 basically you're saying all of it comes from within you and then you project it to the world the way you want but but definitely you have to have a vision and I, and then let me just go back i know that you had all these retreats can i uh, help us with that whole process yes we had about four retreats and basically a retreat means that we come together right we 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 we, we relax in an in a in a probably a rural environment we eat big Basic food. Yeah, I remember the, the other one we went to Adamstown, and and we, we were sleeping in that place for a whole weekend. Yes. So we look for a long weekend. If we can do four days, great. Okay. And we and we go to a place. There are places where you do retreats all over the United States. So we go there, and we there are a number of things that happens. Number one, we get to know each other as people. Okay. Um, re remember that. Um, one of the one of the one of the problems with La Republic, which makes us very different, is that they believe in titles, nice suits, big cars with tinted windows, offices with large chairs and big desks. These are all symbols to intimidate people. Okay, but. In our system, we have the, the, the idea of a leader who is a servant, okay? And the best way to bring out that servant thing is to meet with your brothers and sisters and share food and talk about ideas and so on and so forth. You, you have some serious meetings, of course, but a lot of the time it's just hanging out and bonding, okay? So that if, there, if there's an issue tomorrow, I just call you. There's no need for. Um, there's no need for uh, intrigue, because you know the person, you know their family. Okay. So, when you meet in that retreat setting, you loosen up. You see, when you loosen up uh, psychologically, ideas flow. Okay. So we can take an issue now, and it would look. And because you are now relaxed with me, you are not holding back. So ideas come out that translate into action. Okay, so so it's a way of fostering creativity. Okay, so this idea of the, of the boss leader, you know, the man who is in charge, the big man, get rid of that stuff. Get rid of that stuff. Come down to earth. Okay. And, and solve problems. Okay, it takes, and let me say this, it takes a big person 
to do that. When you are uncertain of yourself, you don't come down to earth. You, you, you st st stay on a platform, on a podium, and you are looking down on the, on, the, on the tops of the heads of people. If we cannot feel comfortable about calling a leader by his first name, that person should not be our leader in the year 2001. One of the problems that we have in Africa is that we defer too much to authority, even when that authority is wrong. We defer, even to our parents, too much, even when they are wrong, even when they are brutal. It's a serious problem. One of the reasons why the Southern Cameroon's people have not stood up to illegitimate authority is because right from our training as little infants, our parents did not give us room to question them. It is a bad, it's a very bad um, uh, trait of our culture. And what that means is that we should not assume that anything that we call leadership is God. If we are doing that, it is, we are using the same thing that is oppressing us. Yeah. So, yeah, so we, we have to, 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 in the very method of liberation, we have to make sure that the culture is right. The culture is right. I, I, you know, when, as I was listening to you and the way you're de describing uh, what happens in La Republica Cameroon, I was thinking of a command system. They are definitely a command system. Uh, yes. Even the laws are command, which is, what, which is what motivated the lawyers to fight that. Look, we are a common law system and, our, and, and we do things by consensus, which I think that's what you're referring to when you get to those retreats and get to know people and, and call them when there's a problem. You're looking for consensus because you're trying to solve a problem, you're trying to look for a long-term solution. Exactly. Um, I remember you, you, look, financing was not that easy, but you were always able to raise money to fund some of the projects that, that, um, that the NCNC, uh, NCNC, especially the NCNC back in, 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 in the territory had, like going to Banjo. I remember, Sometimes it would just be calling people for an afternoon rally and then you put the money. You did not. In fact, I remember you always tried to, to create a bank by talking, by, by, by promoting the idea. I remember you used to say a dollar a day. Struggles of this dimension are built one block at a time. Continuous support. It builds up. You know, you've heard about this thing of small picking could last the shop for morning time. Small picking could last the shop for morning time means you do not pace yourself. You think that if you wish something, it will happen. That's not how it happens. We came up with a slogan from the Adamstown Summit or conference. I think it was coined by Mr. Ngan. A dollar a day. That is how we came up with the $360. One dollar a day, one hour a week. If you've not been giving that, is it too much? Is it too much? Now, I don't think you were getting the dollar a day because our people tend to not, not to be that committed. But for some reason, whenever there was a problem, I remember sometimes it would be a 2, 2 p.m. call that went around for a particular project and, um, and that happened. And would you say that's part of that's coming out of getting to know people and building the consensus and they understood the struggle? Exactly. And it's also a matter of choosing your projects very carefully. That's the pressure points I'm talking about. Okay, so for example, uh, you, you know, there's money, but there's also the thing of people. Okay, all right. Um, the, the, there was something that we arrived at as, uh, as, as a group. If 
an issue arrived for which we had to make a statement or we needed to make a statement for some other reason it might be for education okay what happened was that nobody ever spoke of the cough right you don't just hear something and you go to social media and you blast okay there would be phone calls and then we would say okay um, you two of you make make um, make a statement so make the statement and then the third thing that would happen is that at least one of us was an expert in the English language and would look at the piece and say are you talking big grammar or, is, or you're saying something that people can understand? Okay, so if there's a lot of cumbrous language, as we, as we used to say, cumbrous, cumbabili language there, mm -hmm. he would slash it down to a, a succinct form that everybody can read. Okay, so that happened. So um, did, did you, um, is your tone a good tone? Are you polite? Or are you sneering at people with your peace? Are you trying to be sarcastic? All of that is negativity. Okay? So before that thing goes out, any statement went out, it was totally professional at all levels. Okay? Same. Good grammar. So you don't have money, but when your material comes out, when your letterhead comes out, everything looks professional, way above anything that the Republic does. Okay, so that is using your advantage correctly. Okay, so it's almost like money. Okay, because for them to do the same thing, guess what they do? They hire some expensive PR firm in Washington, D.C. for $100,000 to write correct English in a way that can be respected internationally okay so that is that's like money right there okay so and then if you're choosing a project okay you take something like going to Banjul or Abuja right mm -hmm. and you say well this is an important thing we need to get some um, we, we need to get some 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 legal decisions okay we're not going, we don't have the means to, to fight these people. But we can get some legal decisions because our case is right. So we concentrate resources on that. Okay, so you don't put it on, on fancy projects, on fluff. You use it where it's supposed to be meant to, to, to have the most effect. And so if you, if you pick things that are very effective, right, then you, 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 you create an effective organization. Yeah, you know, as you as you're talking, um, things for every almost every sentence or every paragraph you make, I have things coming to my mind which are which right now are acting against. Like when you talk about fancy project, I, in one of my shows, I did talk about Ambazonia having three television stations right now. Why? It's a waste of money. And all this money is coming from Ambazonians. It's not like somebody took that money from their, from their pocket to say, let me create a television. They go to our people and they do that. So when you talk about fancy projects, those are some of the things that are coming to my mind. And I'm seeing some of the things that, are, that, are, that, that, that if you were given a chance, you would, you would fix in, in this system. Or if they were to hire you as a consultant, you would like to say, let's, let's, let's trim down this. Let's... let's um, let's uh let's work on our let's work on our communication to the public because you are representing the struggle with your words in public um and and i'm saying this because you were very effective and you recruited a lot of outside i'm remember i, I i'm thinking of the this the the 2001 summit in washington the caliber of people who attended the variety of people who attended the amount of foreigners the african-american community was heavily attended and i think that's a result of some of the things you're talking about yes 
Okay, that is what I'm talking about, uh, spending too much time on diplomats. Okay, you have to go out into the community, talk to people in churches, in civic organizations, people who actually care about things. Okay, and, and, and in order to do that, that's how you, you have to craft your message, you have to think about what you're doing, you have to think about your constituency. So that basically people who helped us were not politicians, okay, but they were members of the African American community in good standing who understood our cause because we explained it very well to them. So we are very excited and we are very grateful to our American friends particularly the Honorable Councilman, Mr. William Spaulding, sitting right here. Thank you, sir. And Dr. John Malone, the Chairman of the Association of Community Education at the Washington Saturday College. Thank you, sir. These gentlemen and many of our American friends are the sponsors of this event, and we are very grateful that they were kind enough to allow us to experience this initiative in international democracy. We are enjoying the sweat and blood of Americans who have paid the very costly duty of freeing themselves from slavery, from British domination, and we are very happy that they are doing the same thing in supporting us to free ourselves from the domination and the dictatorship of La République du Cameroon and France. Okay. And you don't need, and, and, and those are the people who opened up the House of Congress to us. All right? So um, when you, you waste too much time with people who are playing games, diplomats are playing games, I want to give the example of, of South Africa. Without Randall Robinson and church people, uh, 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 Reverend Jesse Jackson and others, who are not really politicians. The South African cause would have gone nowhere in the United States. Okay? Okay, there were some politicians, of course, who were positive, and as these people like Randall Robinson raised the pro profile of the case, may his soul rest in peace. That is how the South African cause got traction in the United States. Okay? It was not through talking to big people. Okay? It was not through talking to elected people. It was talking to people who actually influenced these people. Okay? Because they actually believed, they believed in that there was an injustice being done. Okay? So, um, think outside the box. By thinking outside the box, that's how we got. Uh, 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 to be able to do uh, work. If you look at your leadership, it was made up of all professionals, uh, uh, and, and you ran the organization professionally, just like you said. I just wanted to see how you, th what, what was your thinking in recruiting the people that, that became part of leadership? Was it a conscious decision, or those people just filtered up? I... I believe that sometimes you get help without, when you're sincere, you get the help that you need. It's almost like the universe gifts you with people, okay? It's like the universe says, yes, this is something good, and gifts you. You meet people, maybe some of the people that, you, 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 that, that came to help you, you knew 30 years ago, but you did not know that it will be this important at this part of your life, or for this particular cause, it will become an essential uh, 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 component. So these things, you know, we have to have faith. I'm not a particularly religious person, okay, but I have faith in that sense, okay, that you should do the right thing regardless. There is something that 
we did, which is called a pledge. Okay? All right. And the purpose of the pledge is to clarify your action so that you act purely. You act with purity. Okay? And acting with purity means um, you do not think about the fruit of the action. You just do the action because it is right. Okay? When you act like that, when you act like that, your actions are impeccable. Okay? You are doing them and what happens is that it will take you through it will take you through periods of difficulty, right? It will take you through. Um, it will take you through those times when everything seems hopeless. Yes, yes. But you're acting impeccably, and that is your reward—the impeccable action. Okay, that's that's. It, it, there's a book called the Bhagavad Gita, which is the perhaps the foremost Hindu scripture. And he talks about that, about impeccable action. Okay? That you 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 do things because they are right and not because you're going to get something from it. And that is it. Okay? And so if you find people who are thinking along those lines, you are good. You have you have a you have a, a wonderful team. You have a team that can t stand the test of time. Okay. Now I have a quick question for you because because as you've been talking, I've been thinking. Okay, so he is talking about getting people, and and that is that is the kind of leadership I really wanted you to share, and I'm glad you're sharing it. So you actually work with people, direct them on what to focus on in that struggle, how to how to um, uh, decide what is important and what is not important. You see, all of this ties in again with the whole idea of retreat and actually developing uh, the, the elements of change. Because in this whole thing, the humans are the elements of change. And I, th I see you really focusing on getting those to be acting proper so that we accomplish the, the, the goal that needs to be accomplished, isn't it? Exactly. Okay. People, people act in this world because uh, oh, they, want your, they want your oil. Or they want your zinc or copper or whatever it is that's in the ground or the fruits of your labor and that is the reason why they relate to you okay that is the reason why they want to help you or not help you okay and it's a very wrong way of doing things it is an un-african way of doing things if you think about it from our traditions and we need to get back into that okay because people will betray you because you have gold okay in your in your ground in your in your earth okay or water or whatever it is that they want okay but you've got to we've got to act differently you know uh, 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 there was no reward in this for me uh, uh, Augustine Okay, but I'll tell you, I'll tell you, our our colleagues in this struggle, there were some who who made aspersions, okay, about money and all these kinds of things. Oh, La Republic gave you money and so on. Things like that would happen, okay. But the people who are leaders now, I'm asking them not to be responding to these things. Don't go having fights on the internet because uh, somebody took a low blow at you. Okay, it brings down the struggle. Remember, you are a servant leader. You, it's always the people first, not you. Okay, so when you go exchanging blows on the internet, the result is. Three television stations, like you said, okay? Because everybody wants to show that I can, I can do it. No. If you get those things, 
but quiet about it. Maybe you talk to the person. That is what the retreat too would do. It means that you, you can call people and if they're out of line. Uh, Doc, let me say this. I, I'm thinking that um, some of what you're saying and some of it worked because of the caliber of people who were leading and, and doing some of these things. Do you think, and I'm going to ask you, and you don't have to answer this question, but do you think, uh, um, well, let me ask you really, because North America is very important in this struggle. Do you think North America, first of all, is, is where it needs to be in terms of personnel or providing the kind of help that Ground Zero needs? I'm going to be frank with you that I'm out of the picture. It's not... Uh, I know that there are various efforts going on and there are a lot of enthusiastic people, um, but I'm not really part of anything per se. Okay, um, So I don't no, I, I really don't know the nitty gritty. Okay, um, but I can say this: we have a much larger community, and we have we have a lot more enthusiasm than back then. Uh, it's kind of scattered, but the um, the basic material is there. It's about uh, people clearing their personal agendas, I think. I think. Definitely more enthusiasm right now. You know, when, when in the 90s, and I think you alluded to that when you, when you spoke, people thought it was a pipe dream. I don't think anybody thinks it's a pipe dream now, partly because of what has no. happened on the ground and has happened here. No, it's not a pipe dream anymore. No. And it's a matter of um, changing certain perspectives. Yes. If certain perspectives change, that's it. Okay. And the, 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 that people need to start thinking again out of the box. Uh, people need to stop writing inflammatory articles against each other, which I don't read, by the way, if I read one paragraph and it's angry nonsense, I turn it off, okay? I turn it off, I just don't read it. If you, if you, if, if, if you, have, if you are casting aspersions, I don't, I, I don't read it. If you have something to say that is thoughtful, that is not selfish, okay, I'll read it, I'll read it. Wonderful. Uh, so let me ask you this: What is uh, what is exciting you about the ground? And then I'll ask you also: What is exciting you about the United States right now, or the diaspora? Okay, hmm. excitement. I don't do much excitement. Just as a personal uh, personality characteristic. I mean, I mean, in the struggle generally, what when you look at the ground? Because everything you did in the 90s, we did in the 90s, it was, it was, it was definitely looking at the ground. Uh, the, 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 ground was, the ground zero was, 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 the, was the place of impact. So looking at it now, is there anything there that excites you? It is the determination that I see among particularly two categories of people. The young and women, okay? Once women put their heart into something, uh, I believe that it is a winner, okay? So the energy from women makes me very happy, yes, in particular. And the same thing in the United States. I see a lot of important actions by women. One of the things that we did not have was enough female participation. And it used to, uh, 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 
uh, one of our friends, yeah, I'm trying not to mention their names because I didn't tell them I was making a public statement, uh, used to always say, there are no women in this, or they are too few, or they are lackluster. That if you if you if if we don't get the women, we're not going anywhere. Well, that's not the case anymore. Even if there's confusion, the thing about confusion is that it is a characteristic of all revolutions, uprisings. What I want to say is address one issue that was raised: um, the problem of you know, of leadership. In all revolutionary movements, I'm not a political scientist, but the little I know about revolutionary movements is that at some point at the beginning of the revolution, there is a period of anarchy. There is a period of anarchy where people are, they know where they are going to. They are fighting like a war. They are, they are surging forward. They don't know exactly who the leader is. But one thing is common, that everybody is moving forward. The goal is known. And the essential thing at that point is that everybody should be moving forward. And in the, in the age of the social media, it is a compounded issue. Okay. We, I don't think people really appreciate the benefits and detriments of social media enough. There are a lot of benefits. But the other one is that it creates so much confusion. Anybody who has some skills and the appropriate language can create something that can turn minds around. And uh, it's quite scary to tell you the truth. <laughs> yes, I think I'm, I'm, I'm excited about the same things you are. I'm excited about the energy on the ground I'm excited that people um, have gotten to know why they are suffering, why they no longer can, can open their doors like you were saying and go in and do whatever they want in their home. Now they understand why. In the past, they just thought that was part of life because I don't think they knew any different. But now I'm, I'm excited that through... Um, through the struggle um, and the education that has come because of it, everybody understands that. So yes, I understand that energy. I think the only other thing that I need to uh, add, and I don't know if you would agree with this, is that uh, there's this, always this baptism by fire where we all have to get burned somehow before we, we, um, we, we get to the right place where we need to be. Uh, as Benjamin Franklin said, resistance to tyranny is obedience to God. And uh, we know very much that the oppressor is never happy when people are freeing themselves. We remember very fondly in history books that King George III, on the 4th of July 1776, when the Declaration of American Independence was announced, he wrote in his diary that on this day, nothing of significance happened in the world. We know he was very wrong because a very great nation was born, a nation that will support others who are seeking freedom. So we are very thankful that we are enjoying this tradition of freedom that has been granted by American blood and sweat. I look at the struggle and some of the pain on the ground as, as, um, as why people used to say you must bend down before you jump high. To jump high, you must go down a little. So that's part of the price, and so if we put it in, in perspective, we, 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 you know, it's a price that we pay for freedom. Would you say that? Unfortunately, it has been the pattern in human history that people who have power, who have accumulated power, rightly or wrongly, tend not to relinquish and share without chaos. Okay. That is an unfortunate part of human history. Okay. 
I, 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 I think people in an ideal world, people should be able to be fair, but they are not. They hang on to power by tooth and nail, and it has to be then grasped. Their claws have to be taken off in order for other people to breathe. It is an unfortunate human characteristic. Yes, I want to. I also want to support or or say something about what you said about women. Uh, the women that have been involved in the Ambazonian struggle have been uh, have been got sent, if I may use that word, because uh, <laughs> as you were as you were saying what you were saying, I was thinking so. There's a place where testosterone are useful, but not all the time, isn't it? That's right. That's right. Doc, say something about the about the international involvement in our struggle. Um, were you were you did you play any dip diplomacy in in the nineties and and were there any results that you did get and 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 then just make a statement about what you're reading the international reaction to what is going on in, in the territory? The international, let me start by saying that Africans, African states have been very negative in general. Okay? African states have been cowardly in their um, in, in regards to an issue, they've not read it, they've come with their own agendas, they are behaving almost like imperialists in their own right, and uh, that is a harsh judgment. Um, you have a, a country like Nigeria, which Nigeria is a nice country, it has been open, at the level of individuals, but at the level of the state, nah. uh, and everybody else is looking after their interests, their own interests, and the interests of their friends. Okay, that is one of the things that occurred to me is that if we want what we want. We have to get it ourselves for the most part. That is one of the conclusions that one has to make from the events in the last 20 years. Because I'm trying to think about international involvement and I can't see it apart from individuals and groups that stand for justice. When you work with those people, then you get international involvement. That is, uh, you have you have individual um, uh, uh, representatives in Britain here and there who say this is outrageous. But what does the British government do? Right, British government is with its friends. You know, they're thinking about gas and all this nice stuff. Right, so. How do we get it easily? That's, it's not about, it's not, it's not, I, I don't know. I, I have no regard. The British in British Southern Cameroons is a tag of shame. Not our shame, but Britain's shame. Where do you see us in the next five years? I can't see that far. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see that far. Okay, since the, the struggle went supernova, it's been five years, and we're still on. Um, in the next five years, a lot of things depend on what happens in La Republic de Cameroon. Okay, what's going to happen in La Republic de Cameroon in the next five years? that is going to matter a lot and a lot of things are going to change in the Republic of Cameroon in the next five years. 
Other than that, I can't predict. <laughs> but I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope that something happens because the nature of history is such that things happen, things come out of, as I would say in America, out of left field, I guess that's baseball, right? Mm -hmm. And would shock everything. Even the biggest powers on earth are not immune to the vicissitudes of history. Okay? So, in my youth, I thought that today we we'll still have South Africa, a big nuclear appetite power, waxing strong. That's, That's what, what I, I thought. thought. I thought, I thought the Soviet, Soviet Union would last forever. forever. After all, they were huge and they, uh, 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 and they had extremely powerful weapons and they were very scary. So, what could stop them? And so on and so forth. I'm not going to mention any other big power so they don't get angry at me. But everybody is subject. Look at, uh, look at COVID. Right? COVID comes out of nowhere and puts everybody on their knees. Except in Africa. That is weird. Yes. yes. Okay? That's very strange. So, we get to expect strangeness and I hope strangeness favors us. That is what I am hoping. Yes, absolutely. Uh, 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 let me conclude uh, by asking you, are you still in touch with all the activists that you work with? And I'm sure a lot of them, uh, I, no, none of them, I'm sure. I know a lot of them are more in the background now. And what is their thinking about what is going on in North America and what do they think the opportunities are? Okay. Uh, all of us are in the background now. Okay, we're still in We don't talk every day, but... I can call up anybody at any time uh, if I need to. Okay, so we're not we're not in the thick of things. Okay, so we are like um, you know we we are respecting the people who are doing things now. They are younger, and um, they are watching. Okay, we're watching, but. Uh, we're not in the thick of things. <laughs> now, if you were to call to come back and work, or are there any of them who would like to come back and bring the experience, the huge experience that worked? And because when we talk about the functional diaspora, or the or what I like to call the um, um, the tenured diaspora, that's people like you and. And we, we miss the days, especially because of some of what is, is going on now. Is there a chance to be a little more, for, for, this, for, for that whole generation to come back into the struggle, active, and, and with the maturity and experience and the, the enormous education of North America to help the people on the ground? I, I'm, I, am, uh, I can't speak for anybody, but I'm pretty sure that... Uh, Most of them would help in any way that they can, mostly on an advisory capacity. I don't think, um, personally, I cannot do what I did in the 1990s at this point, uh, because it was more demanding than one could imagine. Because the miles that we drove, the number of um, Days that I called off work every every month, every week. Um, the and there were even health consequences. All of that. So what it means is that people can still contribute, but in a different way. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, uh, and and and. Um, <laughs> You know what I was, I think, I think you answered the question just right. I think that sharing that experience and also, like you said, 
participating in advisory roles, but then participating in advisory roles is when people feel that they need advice to seek advice. So, so it's neither here nor there, but I really do appreciate you taking the time to share with us. I think that uh, the, the experience and the leadership and, and the great results that came out of North America need to come back. That's why I brought you in today. I think people are mixing politics with, 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 the, with the movement to liberate a people and that is very destructive to our struggle. I think you, you, talked, you, you talked about um, uh, people doing things not because of what they want to accomplish but because things have to be done. Uh, in a service attitude, but 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 doing things things a la a la, a la republic to to gain something. So so I think there is still a need to come and refocus because if you if we need if we are at a stage where we need to liberate the country, and you are and somebody else is trying to play politics, one the country will not be liberated, and therefore their politics will never be accomplished. And so the advice of people like you coming back and, 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 and educating, it's important. And I'm happy that I was able to get, get you to, to share some of your experiences today. I think, uh, I think with regarding uh, correcting personal behaviors that are detrimental to the cause, um, it can be quite counterproductive pointing, pointing people out. Okay, because what then happens is that you get embroiled in social media battles too. Which yes. Is something that I can afford not to have. Um, you know, but if somebody calls people um, to discuss, to seek advice, that's something different. Okay, then it's, it, it, that can work. Okay, but public statements, um, criticizing people, that's, uh, it, it leads, it doesn't lead to a happy place. I really appreciate you coming on, on, on Doc. Just one word. That let us, Somebody said, let us be the change that we want. Okay, this, I, I, I'm probably reiterating this. Yeah. Don't be like the people that we are trying to remove from our throat. It's very important. And sometimes we do, we, we, we are like them because we spend too much time with them. But don't be like them. Okay, because then we, because, um, you see, we, we like to say we are looking for independence, okay? But the fact is that that's not what we are looking for. What we are actually looking for is for our people to be free, to have their agency, okay? The ability to make decisions for themselves and so on, the ability to have their own lives, you know, on, not oppressed, okay, and making their own decisions. That's what we're actually looking for, okay? And it is strange to say this, but under British colonialism, we had more than, more of that than with this independence with the Republic, which is a sad statement to make, but that is true, okay? People had more agency. So it is possible to have a flag, have a national anthem, have a seat in the United Nations, and still be a colony, working at the behest of France, taking commands from, pra from Paris, the United Nations and the European allies knew that's what we were getting into. Okay? When we say 
we want independence, people think often think about those things that oh, you, know, you have a capital, you have a country that is recognized by the United Nations, and so on, and that's not really it. Okay, because you can have all of those things: flag, anthem, nice military uniforms, and you're still a colony. France operates a number of countries like that in Africa. And I am convinced that the United Nations and the European allies that knew that when they said they were giving us independence, they were throwing us into that situation. Um, they couldn't not have known. Okay? They couldn't not have known. That's why they have all their intelligence services and diplomacy and what have you. They know what they're doing. Okay? But they still put us into that situation. So when you say we want independence and all of these things, as usual I say, don't look at the fluff. The fluff is not important. If our people don't have agency, people can, do not have control over their own lives, it is meaningless. Okay? So, bear that in mind as, they should bear that in mind, because I'm not at the forefront anymore. Bear that in mind as you go out there. Don't bring us counterfeit. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.